What is up, YouTube? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Backfic Battles. Today is the last episode with the Mega Lucario team. We got Mega Lucario, Snorlax, Rotom Wash, Incineroar, Landis Farian, and Tapu Lele. Let us get started. So overall, it's been a an extremely fun team to use. I really have been impressed with Mega Lucario. Of course, hitting Medium Mashes has been quite a bit of pain, I've noticed, when playing this team. And of course, you might not have the most solid matchups, but I do feel like the team does have like ways to work around certain matchups. Especially with like the support Rotom Wash, which has been putting in a ton of work, as well as um, Snorlax plus Lucario. Like, I, well, in the best of one setting, like being able to bait a knockoff and grab Lucario in on a Justified Boost has been amazing. Like, Oh man, it's it's something fun, and I really think people should try it more. But if you are going to use this team, which the QR code will be linked in the description down below, like it always has. 1676 rated player as our first opponent. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This looks like VGC 2017 and 15, to be honest. Yeah, wow. Okay. So... Vanellix, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Gyarados, Virizion, and Glaceon. Huh. This is going to be really interesting. I like Rotom Wash quite a bit here. I like Lele. Don't really like Snorlax, although Snorlax could probably wall a lot of my opponent's Pokemon. I like Mega Lucario. Lambda's variant's alright because of the Intimidate, but like switching into obviously the Ice type attacks if my opponent decides to bring it. Would be quite a bit of a pain, so maybe I opt not to bring it. I'm thinking a Rotom Wash plus Incineroar is a really solid lead because it pretty much handles everything on my opponent's team. So I'm going to try out Incineroar plus Rotom Wash. I definitely want Lele in the back because a Psychic also handling the Tapu Koko. Wait, do I need Tapu Lele? I mean, his damage output is really nice. It's probably Mega Gyarados on this team now that I think about it. Mm, which is fine because my Rotom should handle that just fine. And I think I'll go Lucario as my last Mon. I guess not having Intimidate is something a bit concerning. But I feel like I can handle it with these four Pokemon. If I just put myself in the right position. By the way, I finally did get to be able to beat the Battle Tree in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I don't remember if I mentioned in the last video. But yes, I did beat it. So we got this awesome Battle Tree music. So anyway, let's see what my opponent's going to lead here. Incineroar Rotom Wash pretty much covers everything. Can will o -Wisp, can Electro Web, Light Screen up if I want to. Double Intimidate going to lead, okay. So Gyarados is faster than the Arcanine, so that usually d means it's not an offensive Arcanine. Usually offensive Arcanines tend to be faster, and let's see. So I wonder what's going to be coming out turn one. I could see, I don't think you Dragon Dance. I You should be scared of like a Thunderbolt into the Gyarados slot, I think. I do kind of want to get a Light Screen up, but there's honestly really no point of getting a Light Screen up here. Right away, I feel like. I think maybe an Electro Web is pretty good. And Fake Out the Arcanine, which could have Snarl. Yeah, I like that because even if Gyarados protects or doesn't protect, I get an Electro Web off. As we're going to see the Mega Gyarados just come out turn one, so... This could be a scary turn one because I don't know what my opponent's doing right here. I don't think you're protecting if you're going to stay, if you're going to Mega Ball because you would keep your Intimidate if you want to switch out later. Yeah. So, Fake Out going to go into Arcanine. Dragon Dance is going to come out from this Gyarados, which does make it a massive threat depending on its set. Surprised it went straight for that. But then again, you would live to Thunderbolt, but a Fake Out Thunderbolt would have been instrumental against my opponent. Electro Web doing a good amount. To the Gyarados as well as the Arcanine. And... Earthquake shouldn't knock out Rotom. Even at plus one, I feel like... Waterfall is a bit scary. However, as long as I keep this Gyarados in check with Electroweb, I should be good against it. So I think Electroweb is honestly... Hmm. Yeah, I think Electroweb is the best play, but like... Hmm. Maybe Electroweb plus uh, knock off the Arcanine slot in case Gyarados decides to protect here. Because you can Dragon Dance all you want. 
yeah, as you're going to protect here. Like, you can Dragon Dance all you want, but you're staying at neutral speed no matter what. Electrove is going to come out. I don't care if this is like Roar Arcanine if it's Snarl, because it shouldn't really make too much of a difference in this game. I need to weaken Arcanine for my Lele to pick up the Knockout, or my Mega Lucario potentially later in the game. It's close combat Arcanine. Going out into Rotom, so probably trying to put in range of Crunch, I feel like. So, lowers his defenses, okay. As I do get a knockoff into the Arcanine slot, which does a good amount and gets rid of that Assault Vest. So it was an Assault Vest Arcanine. Hmm. Let's see, Incineroar should be faster than Arcanine now? Yeah, it should be faster. I don't want Rotom to go down just yet because I feel like Rotom can be useful. He should be crunching. Although, Rotom really loses his job after I knock out the Gyarados. You know what? I'm going to Electro up here. Knocks out Arcanine too if my opponent decides to Waterfall the Incineroar slot. And I'll just knock off the Arcanine slot once again. Uh, Gyarados isn't really too big a problem. Extreme Speed actually coming out into Rotom for extra chip. Yeah. Looks like it. Crunch going to go out into the Rotom, which is all right for me because, again, it's at neutral speed on that Gyarados. I'm not really too worried about it. And I get rid of my opponent's Intimidate user because Gyarados already Mega Vault. I don't have to worry about Intimidate slowing down my Mega Lucario anymore. I'll go Tapu Lele here because I think Tapu Lele is the safest play right here. Because if Coco comes in, I don't want Electrum Z happening because that could be a bit of a problem. Yep, Tapu Coco does decide to come out. My Incineroar is at minus two, which is something I do have to note. I also don't know what kind of Tapu Koko set this is, which is problematic. I don't feel like you would Dragon Dance with Gyarados here. I feel like you would tar down Lele. If I can get rid of Coco, because he might protect Thunderbolt and try for a 2 KO. Hmm, there are a lot of plays my opponent can make. I do want to get rid of Coco, though, because if I get rid of Coco, that's absolutely huge for me. And I think I'll... Sw no, I don't switch on Cinderor. Because you can waterfall that slot. Yeah, I think I'll just stay in and low kick the Gyarados. I don't know what kind of Coco this is, but it's just going to stay in and Thunderbolt. I don't think Moonblast would have knocked out the Gyarados, which is. Oh, crit. No para. It's Life Orb on the Coco, so no Z move on that Pokemon either. Arcanine, Gyarados, Coco aren't Z moves. What's the Z move then? Parisian potentially. Oh well. Going to be able to get Shadow Psyche off. This will knock out Top of Coco. And Gyarados, as long as it doesn't Dragon Dance, and I don't feel like you Dragon Dance in the position you are, I feel like you try to pick up a knockout if you're my opponent. I should be able to have this game. Maybe it was a waste of going for Shadow Psyche, but I didn't know what kind of Coco set this was. It could have been a Salt Vest for all I knew. Oh, he did Dragon Dance. Wow. That makes this game a bit tough since I don't think Low Kick's gonna 2 a KO. Ah, that's actually close. It might. Comes down to that last Pokemon. Immensely. Verizion's gonna be that last Pokemon. This is where the game gets really interesting. I feel like you're Phytinium Z and I think I lose. Yeah, I think you're Phytinium Z. Hmm. I need to keep dual targets. Let's see. Wow. I honestly did not expect the... I did not expect the Dragon Dance right there. I thought he would try to pick up a knockout. Wow. So I'm pretty sure if my opponent's going to attack here, it's Fighting MZ. Well, it could also be like Waterfall into Incineroar and the Leaf Blade. Either way, like I'm in trouble. But I got to get the free switch into Mega Lucario, I feel like. But even then, I don't feel like there's much I can do. Uh, Intimidating Incineroar would have actually been nice here because I could have intimidated the Arcanine and the Gyarados and would have been really nice here. So Intimidating Incineroar could have actually been helpful in this game. I don't have the Intimidating Incineroar yet, but I will be updating this team with the Intimidating Incineroar. It would have done a lot more work against my opponent's team, definitely. Uh, plus one Waterfall probably knocks out Lucario. Uh, I guess I gotta go off, maybe close combat knocking out Verizion and Waterfall not knocking me out, but that's really unlikely. You're at plus two. Maybe I also hope for the win condition that Gyarados is for some reason slower than Lucario, because it's only at plus one speed, but I would assume it's Jolly Gyarados because it outsped the Arcanine. Although the Arcanine could have been slow invested because it was more meant in bulk, but yeah, it's gonna outspeed. 
I need to survive this. Oh, our top of leg is targeted. But then again, that seals up the game no matter what. I would have probably had to go for a double protect here, and I don't even know if Close Combat knocks out Verizion. Mm. Oh, wow. So, um, I guess my play was to double protect, but I thought my opponent was just going to go for a Waterfall and a Lucario and a Leaf Blade into the uh, Verizion. I guess I go for the Speed Tie now, if it is a Speed Tie, but I doubt it. Yeah, it should outspeed my Lucario. That is going to be good game to my opponent. So, mistakes were made in this battle. Intimidating Sinar would have helped, but playing-wise, I guess Fake Out was the better play onto Gyarados. Never letting it set up. But the problem was, I just didn't know what kind of Arcanine it was. Like, I wanted to Fake Out the Arcanine because I feel like, if anything, maybe you would protect Snarl, which was a play my opponent could have made turn one. I did not think uh, you would drag that immediately due to how how much pressure was against that Gyarados with Fake Out plus Thunderbolt into another Thunderbolt. But maybe my opponent was like, it's kind of obvious that I could protect Gyarados, so he might double up the Arcanine slot. So let's just go for it and see if it works out. And my opponent definitely did get the workout. So going to drop the first game of today's battle. Really cool team, though. I wish we kind of saw the Hail mode, but then again, I don't think you would really bring Hail against uh, Lucario plus Incineroar. It would be really difficult. But, yeah, I guess also another play I could have done was just double up the Lucario. But the problem was, I didn't know what kind of Coco set that was. If it was Z-Move, it could have been problematic later on. But then again, I don't think Thunderbolt actually 2 a KO's Lele. Or it's a roll, I think, to 2 a KO. So maybe the best play was just to double up. We got Miono here. Who I feel like I've played before, because I remember this team. Blaziken, Bisharp, Landis Fane. Cresselia, Tababulu, and Tapu Koko. I feel like I've played this person before. I just don't remember when. Did I play him on camera? I just don't remember. What's good is my Rotom Wash and my Tapu Lele. I think that's really solid against my opponent as a lead. Tenor is also really good and... I like Lucario quite a bit here, but I think Landers is more reliable. The problem is that Bisharp is going to be a pain. Luckily, I'm not Intimidating Incineroar because Intimidating Incineroar would be difficult with the mods I decide to bring. So, let me figure this out. Rotom Wash, top of lay, puts on a lot of pressure. Lucario good, gets good damage output, but the problem is it's kind of hard to maneuver around my opponent. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, even though Lucario, I think, could be good, it's just I don't feel like it's solid enough to bring this matchup. I definitely want to lead Rotom Wash Tapu Lele because it gets rid of Electric Train, so Tapu Lele can probably just try to knock out. I have Incineroar in the back, and I think Landris as well. Snorlax could have been useful too. Hmm. I'm just not sure. Because my opponent's taking all the time, it looks like, but I just don't see Lucario. Like, yes, if I do put in a game winning position, it would be like Electro Webbing. But the problem is Cresselia and Landris. That combination shuts down Mega Lucario's main way of sweeping. Because Icy Wind is always going to negate an Electro Web, so there's really, it would be really hard to set up for Lucario, I feel like. I feel like it's easier just to bring Landris, because Intimidate switching to Coco, and Blaziken Bishop's going to lead here, so. This is pretty good for me because I do lead my Rotom Wash and my Tapu Lele here. Uh, I feel like you would be worried about Sharatsaki if you're my opponent. And Sharatsaki is definitely a viable option that could come out. <sighs> hey, wasn't this... Was this Sash or was this Life Up? I don't remember. I do remember playing this person, but I just don't remember the item. Oh, uh, that would have been nice. I feel like you would be forced to switch out Blaziken, right? Because Shadow Psyche is going to do a lot through Protect to Blaziken. It would do like 80%. So, on, so, okay, let's see. Is it worth losing my Lele here? You know what? He, if my opponent goes for like, has high jump kick, could double up into uh, my, ah, you do go on a Cresselia, okay. So there were two plays I thought you would make. If you had high jump kick, which is kind of doubtful since I don't think they really carry it, I thought you could potentially high jump kick right there and knock off my Rotom Wash, which is why I'm like, okay, if you do that, uh, I'm in a really bad position. So I felt like maybe training Lele is okay here. Not, there really is no mid ground play. My opponent does have that option. 
but Sharazaki does an okay amount. It would have knocked out Blaziken. I most likely would have outsped it because they usually run adamant as knockoffs going to go into Rotom. Okay. That is a lot. That's life orb? No. That's focus ash. Okay. Jeez. Bishop just does so much damage. I do get the will of a spot in the Bishop, which is really crucial though. Like that is a really crucial will of a Because now Incineroar can come in. Go for which slot? I could also light screen up here, but ye is it really worth light screening up? I guess if Coco's in the back, it could be useful for the end game. But then again, I got like multiple switches. I think getting rid of the Bisharp is better. But I'd be already getting rid of Bisharp in the future, potentially. Hmm. Maybe just damaging the Cresselia and trying to put in a knockoff range is the better play. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna go in a Bisharp. I'm gonna go in Incineroar. Luckily, I'm not intimidating Incineroar. Like, it's so weird. Like, some games I do want to name, and some games I'm glad I'm not. So, knockoff gonna come out, doubling it into Rotom. Oh, you target down my Incineroar. Very solid play for my opponent. Hydro Pump does connect with the Cresselia. That's pretty good because I do need to put a knockoff range. Looks like it's not a knockoff range, which is nice. Shattered Psyche coming out, it looks like. Hmm. I do wish I brought Mega Lucar now. Oh, it's E Trickum, actually. That helps my Incineroar's case. Yeah, that really helps my Incineroar's case. Hmm. I will gladly take that, especially since you have Trick Room and you have Blaziken in the back. Huh. And if you have Bulu, I'm okay with that as well. Like, yeah, the Trick Room's actually really benefiting me here. Do I want to lose Rotom, though? Because I'm fine. I kind of like Rotom in the back, but... I could also go Landris here, which wouldn't be a bad play either. I just want to avoid a Sucker Punch or a Psychic. Yeah, Landris is a fine play. And I'll just Flare Blitz. Or I could go... I could also go Lele. Which I think is a better mid-ground play and get rid of Cresselia here. The reason is I don't want the Shrek wearing out yet, so I'd rather get rid of the Cresselia if possible. Because I don't want you to reverse Shrek because this Shrek is actually really helping me. So I'll gladly keep the Shrek up. So Lele is going to come out. Psyche going to come out into the Rotom slot. Alright. Oh, if you Iron Head, that would be a really good double. You get rid of the Cresselia there, so I don't have to worry about Cresselia for the rest of the game. And let's see what the Bishop decides to go for. Going to be a knockoff into the... Okay, doubling up the top of Lele. Ah, that still does a lot, even with the burn. Don't tell me that's Bandit, Bisharp. Actually, the damage it's suggesting does seem like Bandit, actually. Bulu's gonna come out. Okay. Oh, this is where it gets a bit interesting. He might be superpower. I want to scout for superpower all out pummeling. I think I'm gonna go hard Rotom, sack Rotom off. Because I don't need Rotom now due to the fact that there's no Landris in the back I'm really have to worry about. So I'll sack Rotom here. I don't need Rotom anymore. And let's see what my opponent decides to do. I think it's gonna be a superpower or a all Yeah, I think it has to be superpower, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That is beautiful. The Rotom's gonna go down, that's alright for me. Like, I really don't mind that as... Yeah, Bishop gonna knock off. Not gonna do anything. <sighs> What's the play here? Grassy Terrain is up, which makes uh, KOing the Blaziken in the back a lot harder. I definitely want to go Incineroar here, and I think Low Kick the Bishop's to play. Or I could just Psychic the Tapu Bulu slot because I could see Tapu Bulu switching out as well. Yeah, I'm going to low kick the Bishop and Psychic. Even if Tapu Bulu stays in, it's not knocking out my Incineroar because of the minus one. So yeah, I'll take this trade. Go for Psychic and low kick. Even if Tapu Bulu stays in, not the worst case because... I guess the worst case if it's Min Speed Tapu Bulu. It is Min Speed Tapu Bulu, okay. It's not going to be able to knock out my Incineroar, yeah. Not even close. And that Tapu Bulu is like really really was it minus two and it's gonna be minus three once my landers comes in and my landers can come in like right now i'll definitely take that trade 
So I get rid of the Bisharp and I get a big amount of damage onto this top of Bulu. Still a lot less than I thought. Special defense falls. Are you a salt vest? You might be a salt vest. Hmm. Might be a salt vest. Landis is probably going to come in. I'm definitely going to go. Yeah, Blaziken going to come out. How many turns of Grassy Turn and Trick Room? This is the last turn of Trick Room. Okay. I feel like I would live a superpower if I just... Yeah, I... F okay, the best place to go in a Landers and Flare Blitz if I do live a superpower. Because I feel like if you're my opponent, you're either in a superpower and Flare Blitz here, or you're going to Woodhammer my uh, Lele here. And I think this covers both plays because I feel like this will allow me to live superpower from the top of Bulu since it's now minus three, and I should be able to knock out top of Bulu. Then I get Lele in and reset the terrain so Earthquake can be... Uh, can actually knock out the... Bulu, but oh I don't actually knock it out that's pretty big flare blitz is gonna come out in its regular form doesn't come anywhere close to KO unfortunately but ooh. I guess now we play mind games Oh, I honestly thought Incineroar could have survived that. Uh, all right. We're going to go top of Lele. The grassy terrain is now over. This top of Bulu is still at minus two attack. I guess the question is, what do you go for here if you're my opponent? I feel like it has to be a solid best top of Bulu. You know what? I think Earthquake is to play and Psychic into Bulu. Because I feel like it might be a solid best Bulu. And if that's the case, I should be able to knock out with Psychic and Earthquake. I can see Blaziken protecting here, which could be really obvious. If you don't protect Blaziken, I feel like you have to Flare Blitz the Lele. Although Mega Evolved, Blaziken could knock out my Landorus. I guess it comes down to that. If, Me if uh, Blaziken can knock out my Landorus. But I think that's how my opponent can win the game. Probably my phone's best shot. Hmm. I could definitely see it knocking me out. Blaziken's gonna mega evolve, so let us see. Do you protect? I mean, it's gonna come down to the same things anyway, I feel like. Flare Blitz recoil is gonna be a lot. Yeah, you're gonna Flare Blitz here. Ooh, is that an Alele? Oh, it's in the Landers. Ooh, Landers just not able to survive. Oh. Maybe I should have targeted on the Blaziken slot, but if Blaziken protected, I lost the game. Oh, and Top of Blue survives the... Ah. Oh, good game. Good game. So I made the play really hoping I could lift Flare Blitz from the Blaze again, but it looks like I wasn't able to. I guess I messed up. Well, the two calcs, I guess I messed up. The superpower KOing my... Yeah, the superpower KOing my... Incineroar at minus three and the Landers being able to take the Flare Blitz. I guess what I should have done was switch out the... I guess I should have just switched out my, into my Landers on the Incineroar. But I guess there were a few things to note. I I took too long to realize it was Bandit Bisharp. I should have realized it by turn one because that knockoff did way too much. So if I did realize that, I think it would have been a... I think it would have been easier and, well, for me to play. Second, there was no Landers, so I could have actually brought Megalucar, and I think Megalucar could have actually done a lot of work. There's no recovery barrier on the Cresselia. I could have threatened close combat shards. Psyche knockout turn one, or at least a close combat doing a lot of damage, and a shard Psyche doing like 80% to protect on Blaziken. And you can only switch in Cresselia for one of those. Maybe you would hard switch out both of them. One is going to be the Bulu coming in for the Bisharp and Cresselia. But even then, Medium Ash was still threatening my opponent. So maybe there were like, yeah, there were definitely some plays I could make better in that game. We're going to go for one more though. And, oh, uh, mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. But we are learning. That's the important part. We are learning. And yes, yes, I will get an Intimidating Center. I'm actually getting one tomorrow. Or I should be able to get one by tomorrow. So hopefully... 
we will be able to showcase that Intimidate Incineroar, which should be pretty cool. I've been testing on Showdown. It's honestly, it just doesn't feel the same as like Scrafty or Landis Fairy. And I feel like it's a little bit different. I'm not really comfortable with Intimidate Incineroar just yet. However, it is a fun mod and it does make a lot of teams better. Like Mega Gardevoir standard stuff, like the Razor's version of Mega Gardevoir is pretty good with it. And let's see, it makes the Mega Latias team like it's a good combo of like Mega Latias. Well, most of the psychic types Mega Latias, Inst Metagross, um, Gardevoir. I think it pairs a well with pretty with a lot of those, as well as Gothitelle. It pairs really well with Gothitelle with the Intimidate now. But yeah, I think we're just gonna cut it to the third game because I really do want to play a third game and see if I can win one. I don't want to go 0-3, but we'll find out here. So we'll be right back with the third game of today's episode. All right, we found our last opponent, 5088 rated player from Japan. Let us see. Oh, it looks like, speaking of Mega Gardevoir teams, this is definitely one of the more popular ones that I've noticed. So, Mega Gardevoir, Incineroar, Zapdos, Landis Varian, Tapu Fini, and Ferrothorn. So, this is probably the team, actually, which is funny because I was testing this a lot earlier. So, yeah, this is definitely one of the teams I expected to see with Intimidate and Incineroar being out. It's definitely a really, really strong pick. I guess. The problem is, I don't know what kind of Landis it is. Scarf or Bandit, we have to find that out because it could get really annoying. If I don't, uh, what are the Pokemon I want to bring? Incineroar is okay here in this matchup. I'm kind of leaning towards more of Lucario, Rotom Wash, Tapu Lele, and Landis Bain. I think it's really solid here. Yeah, I'll try it out. Intimidate Incineroar is going to be interesting in this matchup. I don't like my own Incineroar because yes, it handles Pharaoh. It can switch in decently. Without the Assault Vest, it's not going to really switch in as well, and I feel like I'm always going to be pressured by a Tapu Fini, which is why I don't feel like bringing Incineroar is going to be the best case here. And Landers, the damage output to switch into the other Landers, and Rotom Wash is pretty good against like Fini Zapdos combinations. So let's see how this is going to work. I think Snorlax could have also done a lot of work, because my opponent really doesn't have many ways to pressure Snorlax right off the bat, other than knockoff from potentially the... Incineroar, maybe it's Z-Move. I've actually seen this team a lot with Z-Move, Incineroar, and Assault Vest Landis. So there are a lot of variants of this team. So it's got to be like, what do I figure out? I've also seen Z-Move on Zapdos on this team with uh, Fireium and Electrium. So a lot of things to consider here. I want to lead Lele because I get to find out some speed tiers right away. Gardevoir Landis, I get to find out if it's Scarf uh, Landis or not. Turn 1. It is Scarf Landis. Oh boy. The thing is, my opponent should know I sh could just shout at Psyche. I don't think minus one superpower actually knocks out Lucario. Don't get me wrong. I already been messed up with my calcs a lot today. So, mm, I really just want a Meteor Mash because I, uh, I just don't see you going for... Um, I just don't see you going for superpower. Well, I you're not going to earthquake, that's for sure, unless you switch on the Zapdos, which actually is a pretty fair mid ground play. If I was my opponent, I'd probably go into Zapdos for the Gardevoir and U-turn if I did have those two Pokemon in the back. Or I could see Ferrothorn coming in. Ferrothorn would be really nice for my opponent. However, I feel like I would be able to live superpower. I'm because it's Scarf Landers. It's not like. Oh, this could be really bad if it doesn't, but the Scarf Landers I've seen on this team are usually Jolly because Rain can be a problem for this team. So I'm hoping this is going to be Jolly, Landers, and Superpower wouldn't be able to knock out Lucario. As we will, Mega Ball Lucario. Is Gardevoir just protecting here? That could be the case too. That's the case I had to make a 50-50 read the following turn. It is going to Mega Evolve, okay. You usually don't Mega Evolve unless you're attacking, so it's U-Turn, maybe Superpower, oh, the Anticipation. It's U-Turn. Oh, that's so good. Oh, wait, you're going in Incineroar. I kept forgetting Incineroar is just such a safe play because you can Intimidate my Lucario, which is so dumb. I keep forgetting that. No. Oh, you're going Zapdos. <laughs> okay, there was no Incineroar to worry about. Please hit. 
Lucario. Lucario. You know I made the read. I got crit too. <laughs> I think this is the first episode I'm going 0-3 because I don't see a way out. Okay, I do see a way out. It's not a good way out though. Mm, hitting that Meteor Mash would have knocked out Gardevoir at minus one. KOing it, but that's the risk you got to do with Meteor Mash. Man. Shout out, Psyche. Rock Tomb. Oh. You don't know how beautiful it would have been. They always like to U-turn with Scarf Lander's turn one, which is why I felt like you wouldn't go. And even then, even if you didn't, I feel like I do love the attack with Mega Lucario. Medium Mash would have been good. The only thing that could have stopped it was either the miss, which did happen, or a... What's it called? Either the miss or a Incineroar switching. But then again, I wouldn't have gone down to anything but a Psychic, and then he crit me. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So I will knock out the Zapdos in comparison and get some damage off into God of War. The problem is, yeah, now the Scarf Land has became a huge threat. I do knock out the Zapdos. I don't have Rock Slide, otherwise I would go for the Flinch, but I'll go for Rock Tomb because it probably gives me some decent damage on the God of War. Gets a crit, okay. Doesn't really make up for much. Trick Room's gonna go up, which is... Probably horrendous for me, depending on what that last Pokemon is. <laughs> I think this is the first 0-3 of the series ever. Barrow. Alright. Maybe if I crit Gardevoir with Hyper Voice? I mean, I'm pretty sure you're just going to Psychic and Gyro Ball. There's nothing I can actually do. Because I don't have a switch in. Yeah, I just don't have a switch in. Oh, man. Mega Lucario would have wrecked shop if I hit that Meteor Mash, but oh well. Not much I can do about it. That's like the one thing about Mega Lucario. I wish it got Iron Head. If it got Iron Head, I would use Iron Head in a heartbeat because 90% accuracy is terrible for consistency. Get Lele out. Go on a Rotom. Hope I can live something. Probably going to be Gyro Ball. Iron Head. No Landers. Well, that's banded, but um, I mean, you could have just psychic then Gyrobald or Iron Head. I mean, and thanks to the Rock Tomb, which was probably not the smartest call on my pl my part. Oh man, and this team was having a good showcasing too until this episode happened, and then I just dropped over three. Oh well, yeah, there's like nothing I can do. His guard was just gonna—he's literally just gonna Iron Head and. Uh, Hyper Voice, he underspeeds me, and there's nothing I can do. So, I'm gonna forfeit here. Good game. I think I made the play, and I had like that 90% chance. Oh well. Okay, so I completely confused the order. <laughs> it looks back. So, first game, plays could have definitely been different. Uh, fake out would have been pretty big, because I'm. I just realized that. Okay, so I looked back at the games. Turn one of game one, fake out in the Gyarados probably could have changed the momentum. I feel like no matter what, I still wouldn't have made the Moonblast play, even though it was the call later on in the game when I went for Sharataki in the Tapu Koko. I still think that Moonblast in the Gyarados wasn't the best play because I felt like my opponent would waterfall there. I did not expect a second, second Dragon Dance, if anything, if the Gyarados decided to attack because my opponent could have gotten a knockout onto Incineroar or Tapu Lei, but instead decided to Dragon Dance up instead. Which, that ca completely caught me off guard, but the correct play was to target down the Gyarados, since I guess I was just worried about like Arcanine maybe getting a Snarl off or something, or maybe potentially roaring out my, my, uh, my Rotom Wash, because I felt like if you roared Rotom Wash out into something that was a bit scary to handle, let's say I got in Lucario for instance, I would have been in a pretty rough position because you could just dry and that's a normal form and it would have been pretty bad. So I was worried about that kind of scenario, even though it's really unlikely it was a potential scenario. So yeah, maybe that wasn't the best play. Game two was the game where I just messed up the damage calculations. 
because otherwise I should have just switch out and cinema go on, gone out on the top of le into my landers that turn maybe then I could have switched out my landers go out into my incinera once again so yeah there were quite a few plays I think I could have made differently throughout the battle for that and just the damage calculations just completely screwed me over uh, I definitely messed up on that part and then game three it was just came down to 90% and yeah I couldn't really do much it's like you hit it 90% chance you KO the guard for otherwise you have that 10% chance you get nothing out of the turn and then uh, the crit hurt me because of the fact that Megalucari wasn't around, so I had no effective way to handle the Gardevoir in the late game. So, hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Battles. If you did, please leave a like down below, show the support, as well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below, such as my social medias, and all that good stuff will be linked in the description down below. I'll be updating the QR code team with uh, Intimidate Incineroar if anyone does want to try it out. But otherwise, look forward to a brand new team in the next episode. And if, again, if you haven't checked out my previous, previous episodes, highly recommend go checking it out. The playlist is down below as well as my side tiers on the channel. Otherwise, until we battle again, have a great day, people. I'll catch you around in another video.